Welcome to Drawing Wild Washington. I'm your host, Judd Dunkerley, associate artist with the Burke Museum at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, in this program, we are drawing life from the Shrub Steppe. This is a dry, grasslandy region in southeastern Washington, around Yakima and Walla Walla and the Tri-Cities. The Shrub Steppe is named after the plants found there. Shrubs, like sagebrush, which we'll be drawing, and steppe, which is based on the Russian word for grassland. Um, so today we're gonna draw a mammal, which is the white-tailed jackrabbit. We're gonna draw a bird, the burrowing owl, and a plant, sagebrush. So if you haven't watched the Drawing Wild Washington intro yet, please go back and do that first, because it explains a little bit about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it. So let's get going, okay? Uh, we're gonna start with the white-tailed jackrabbit, which is the largest of the jackrabbits in the jackrabbit family. Um, the body is gonna be three circles. So once you draw your first circle, you're gonna draw three in a row, and they're gonna angle down a little bit. I'm angling down to the left. Okay, so three circles stuck together like that. And that's basically the body. So we're drawing with really light pencil. Uh, I'm using my red colored pencil. And uh, in real life, the jackrabbit is about two feet long and weighs from like five to 10 pounds. So pretty big rabbit. The head right off the top up here is a square about the same size as one of the circles. And it's off at an angle, about a 60 degree angle if you measured it out. And then off the front, we've got a trapezoid, or it's kind of like a cut-off triangle, if you want to think of it like that. And that's for the nose, okay? And that's about half the size of the square that we just drew for the head. So a little trapezoid. And um, on top of that, we are going to draw uh, the ears. And the ears are pretty good size. They stick off the top of the head. And just this back corner right here, we're going to draw a couple of ovals and then right in the middle of the head kind of in the middle top part is a big circle and then there's going to be another circle inside it and that's the eye so they have pretty big eyes pretty big ears good eyesight and good hearing uh, which they use at night which is when they do most of their feeding they like to eat little green plants and they forage mostly at night Okay, uh, the nose is just like a little skinny line right along the top of this trapezoid. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And the mouth is kind of underneath, so you don't really need to draw the mouth too much. Uh, the front legs are skinny rectangles about as tall as this body circle, and they come from the little space right here. So I'm going to draw a skinny rectangle. Again, it's about as tall as the body. And then the feet are just little sort of triangles like that. Okay, these are my little placeholders. And then we can do another one kind of behind it like that. It likes to prop itself up on its front legs a little bit. And then the back legs are basically this back circle. The very front, we're going to go back with another rectangle almost to the ground. And then about the same length, we're going to draw another little oval. And then I'm going to just overlap the second one back there to line up with my first one. So the legs actually go forward and then backwards and then forwards again. And a lot of times it's back feet are resting like this on the ground. Okay, and they should line up with the front legs if you want to draw a little line under there like that. And uh, they can run up to 34 miles an hour if you've ever seen them. And sometimes they'll run in a zigzag if they're threatened to try to lose whoever's chasing them or whatever's chasing them. Uh, the tail is under the bottom circle here and it's about, oh, about half the size or quarter of the size actually. And it's just another little sort of rectangle. They don't have huge tails and they throw them up and use them to signal sometimes. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of draw in my lines under here and then go back in with my darker pencil and start doing some details. And check out the ears. Uh, if you're looking at the photograph, and there's some cool shading inside the ears like that. Uh, and like I was saying, the jackrabbits spend most of their time uh, hunting for food at 
night. When I say hunting, I mean hunting for plants. Uh, during the day, they kind of chill out in these shallow, they're not really burrows. They're just sort of like indentations that they sort of carve out. It's like if you get up in the morning after you've been sleeping and you look at your bed, there's like a body-shaped space in your bed where you've been laying all night. They do the same thing on the ground. These things are called forms. So they're like, they're kind of like nests, but they're a little more casual. Okay, so we're finishing up the rabbit. I love those eyes. They're always really intense looking. And it's just got a short fur. And so you can go in with very light sort of, and you can do this for as long as you want and just sort of try to fill it up with fur. Sometimes when I'm drawing things like this, I won't draw every single part of the body like that. I'll just do a little bit there, do a little bit there, do a little bit here, maybe some in the middle. And usually if somebody's looking at the drawing there, they go, okay, wait, so I'm starting to get the idea. I guess the whole thing's filled with these little furs. All right, and you can darken it up a little bit. Okay, and that is the white-tailed jackrabbit. Next up, we're gonna draw the burrowing owl. Uh, the Latin is Athena cunicularia, which is really fun to say. And despite the name, the burrowing owl rarely digs its own burrows. It likes to uh, live in burrows that are made by um, ground squirrels and things like that, other animals that dig. So you would too. Uh, the body is at a 60 degree angle and it's gonna be an oval. So 60 degrees is about like that. So I'm gonna draw a little oval here. Okay, and then these things in real life are not much bigger than a robin. They're not giant owls. Uh, the head I'm gonna put on the top of the oval, kind of straight up above it, and it's gonna be a circle. And then back in the bottom, the wingtips are gonna come out kind of from the oval like that, like a triangle. And then the tail is just gonna be a little rectangle underneath. And then directly over from there, we're just gonna shoot out a couple little rectangles, a little bit longer than the tail. And this is where the legs are gonna be. We got a toe going back, and then an even longer toe going forward. And then the claws are a little bit flatter they're not as hooked as some uh, some other claws. So they're pretty skinny and really sharp, but they're not as rounded as uh, other creatures. And some of that is because the burrowing owl uh, can actually run pretty fast on the ground. Look it up. Okay, so I'm gonna smooth out the body. Uh, and then we're gonna draw some uh, face details here. So I'm gonna start out right in the middle of the circle and we're gonna draw kind of a, a triangle. We're gonna put all the face details right in there, okay? Uh, across the top of the triangle, I'm gonna draw five, two, three, four, five circles. Now the eyes are gonna be the second one and the fourth one. And you're gonna draw a circle and then another circle, and then you wanna cut off the top of the circle so they kind of look annoyed and they've got this great look. Uh, and then the beak is going to be kind of like a diamond shape right under the third circle right in there. Okay. And if you've done it right, they'll look pretty, pretty annoyed. Like they're, they're just looking at you like, what do you want? Okay. And then under the face, there's kind of a darker band of feathers right in here. And then the wing comes along that. It's a little bit lighter in the belly and on the legs. And then the rest of it's kind of speckled. So I'll get my darker pencil and start drawing in some details and tell you some interesting things about the burrowing owl. I already talked about the burrows. They do live in these burrows underground. Uh, they can dig them, but usually they don't, you know, because if you find somebody else's burrow, it saves you a lot of time. Dig your own burrow. Uh, what I'm drawing right now is this speckled decoloration, which acts to help sort of camouflage it. And it pretty much covers all the feathers in the back and the wings like this. So you can, you can drive yourself crazy trying to draw speckles, but if you draw a couple, it gets the point across. Okay, and they go all the way up to here. Another cool thing about the burrowing owl is they, uh, they eat bugs. 
Uh, and sometimes they will create a little lure for the bugs by stacking up cow manure right in front of their burrows. True that. Make a little manure garden. The bugs love manure. Just like you kids. Just love manure. And then they'll come from all around trying to get themselves a little manure snack and the owls will just be right there. Bam. Eat them. Okay. Unlike most owls, the burrowing owl is active during the day. Okay. Uh, but it does hunt at night. And like I said, it can sprint around on these long legs. And that is pretty much it for the burrowing owl. So we're going to move along to the last part of our lesson today, which is sagebrush. Sort of the iconic plant for the shrub step. You see it everywhere. There's a lot of different species of sagebrush. Um, but they all kind of have the same basic form. So I'm just going to start drawing. Uh, I'm going to draw a bunch of them. And I'll draw one that's kind of close up, because when I draw them, it's usually as part of a landscape drawing. And I'll put some in the front. So I'm just going to start with some straight lines. And I'm going to kind of curve up from a single stalk. And these have just single trunks, and then they have these deep tap roots that reach way right down to get groundwater. And they're one of the best plants for the shrub step at finding water. And then they bring it up to the surface for themselves to drink, and then... They end up supporting like a little group of plants that sometimes will go around them and feed off of their water. So I'm just kind of branching upwards as I go. And then uh, as I get to my smaller tips, I'll start drawing kind of ovals. And these are the leaf clusters. So you'll just start drawing a bunch of ovals. They'll usually point upwards, kind of like feathers. If you've ever seen sagebrush or you live around sagebrush, you know, these distinctive little shapes. And then I'm going to draw in some details after that. Uh, and then you can draw some more going towards the background. And then if you want to draw like way in the background, sometimes I'll draw like a, a ridge or something like that. And then I'll draw more. And they'll just be these sort of lumpy little ovals. And the closer they get to the top, they'll get smaller. Okay, and I'm using really light lines to draw right now. And just kind of group them together and draw them smaller and smaller as they go back towards that ridge. Because the farther away they are, the smaller they look. Okay. And um, I am going to go in and start drawing in the stems then. Okay, branches that come up. Okay, the wood from these little bushes, little shrubs, is super flammable. Okay, and it burns really quick, but it smells really good. And the leaves smell really good. Sometimes when I go out to the shrub step, I'll get a find a little piece of a of a sagebrush and break it off and then rub it in between my fingers. And oh man, that smell it's so good. And especially after it rains, the smell of the sagebrush is unmatched. It's like the best air freshener in the world. It brings back memories. So what I'm drawing is the little leaves right here. They're almost like a little V pattern, kind of like a feather. So I'll go in and draw some of them to give it a sense of texture. But other than that, um, I use this a lot in the background when I'm drawing my, my, my scenes from the shrub step. Very common, probably the most common shrub in the shrub step. It puts the shrub in shrub step. Okay, and you can go into as much depth of detail as you want. But most of the time, since these are just in the background of your drawing, I just try to give a suggestion of some leaves, and I don't worry too much about making it super detailed. So you can see I'll just kind of draw some little curvy lines like that, and some stems on the bottom that sort of branch a little bit. And then when I come back here, I'll just kind of draw like a lumpy oval, and I'll sort of shade the bottom of it. And as long as I get the colors right, people will get the idea that these are just more of these. I'll draw a little shadow under here. That's a fun thing to do. A little cast shadow. That'll show where it touches the ground. So there's some sagebrush and then some little sagebrush and it goes all the way back. And you can draw in your mountains over here as the cascades. In the distance, little tiny sagebrush is going all the way back to the horizon on the shrub step. 
All right. So that's about it for today. Uh, thanks for watching the Burks uh, Drawing Wild Washington. And just remember, when you're looking to draw, drawing starts with seeing and thinking. So first of all, see the shapes within the shapes of the thing you want to draw. Think about how you can put them together in space and then apply that to pretty much anything, nothing you can't draw. So until next time. What's that? You want more? Well, why didn't you say so? We've got coloring book pages available for each one of the ecosystems we've done a program on, and we've got the entire mural available as a silk screen poster for purchase on the website. So check out the links and get yourself some more ecosystem art. Bye!